This is probably the, cuff, the toughest horse we've ever seen bro. I gotta do something with this Colt. I gotta get him in the mountains. I gotta get miles on him. I thought they dropped off a, a wild, um, a white-tailed deer. He's, and you've seen what Joel got to begin with. And can you believe the progress this young man has made with this horse? I am gonna tell you this about, we gave Joel quite a challenge this year with Wrangler's Lone Star. This is probably the, cuff, the toughest horse we've ever seen broke. So, Joel, tell us about your journey with Wrangler. So in 2018, the Garners, they um, held their Rock and Heart Challenge, which I entered, and I won it. And after you win their Colt Starting Challenge, you're not allowed to go back in. 2020 came and they contacted me. They said, Joel, this year we're doing something a little different. We're having what's called the Champion Showcase. So in the Champion Showcase, they have some of their previous champions come back. Um, they aren't competing at all, but they, they asked us if we would train some of their four-year-olds that they had on the ranch so they, and they would sell them at their challenge and sale. When we got there, there was one horse in the back of the pen. He was paying no attention to us, and of course that was Wrangler. Jim had warned me that I may need to use a rope, but I thought I'd give it a go with a halter first. I just tried to ease up to him. I'd go up, and I was able to get up enough to scratch him on his shoulder but he was a pretty feely colt. And the other horses didn't help too much either. After about 30 minutes of messing around, trying to get him caught, I finally just ran him into a pen off to the side there and got my lariat. And I just wanted to take things easy, make it a real low stress situation. So I set things up, waited for the right time, and bam, through a loop, got him caught. As soon as he hit the end of that rope, it was easy to tell that he responded quite well to pressure. Next step was working my way up the rope and just trying to get that halter on him. The Garners bought Wrangler as a yearling and he was pretty wild and didn't get tons of handling since then. I was able to get the halter on him and as soon as that halter was done up he acted like he'd done it a million times. Getting him loaded was pretty easy too. I just had Ella come up behind him and just wave her arms a bit to give a little pressure and he hopped right in the trailer. I thought he was a very skittish, kind of jumpy kind of horse. Um, he didn't uh, he didn't necessarily have the the kind eye that you see at a horse right off the bat. Day one went pretty good. We were in the round pen to start with, and I really just wanted him to start hooking up with me a little bit. He really wanted to turn that hind end towards me to start with. By the end of it, I got him to start looking at me, which was progress. 
He was still quite hesitant to get the halter on, but I managed to do it. Now came the process of desensitizing. Once I start adding a pressure, I try and consistently keep that pressure on him until he stops moving and relaxes when I'm doing all my desensitizing exercises. Week two was much of the same, just tons of desensitizing. I just had to get creative and think of a whole bunch of different things that I could do to get him quieter, get him thinking more. Usually after I get like eight days on a colt, they are got a few rides under their belt, they're super fluid with all my exercises, and it just wasn't the case here. Now came the time to pick up his feet. Wrangler was super quick with that hind end, and so there was not a chance I was getting close to it. And so I put a rope on his front foot and looped it up around his girth there. I was really just trying to stay out of the way and letting him fight himself. Once he would show me some try, that's when I would release the rope. Doing this also really helped with saddling because that rope was like a steady pressure similar to what a cinch would feel like. Saddling him for the first time went actually really well. This right here shows you exactly how he was though. Just think, we had been working him for 10 days. This is day number 10 on him. And we're just getting saddling and you can see his body language is very tight and very worried. We're just really trying to build some confidence into this horse. You just have to look at his ears. His ears say a million words. The way he's looking back, just that tight, nervous, but as we go on, I want you to just watch how his ears change. Because he does get better. So I liked watching how much better he got and every time you desensitized him, he just, each video, he was more relaxed. A horse like that needs a lot of groundwork in my opinion. Um, overall I think Joel did a pretty good job on Wrangler the first start time, like the first time I snubbed him on him. Um, he did a pretty good job of keeping him like centered and stuff and the horse was definitely he he thought about like uh, losing his mind a few times for sure um, but Joel did a good job keeping him gentle and mind focused I guess
keeping relaxed was a huge part. It was hard. <laughs> Just breathing. <laughs> I told myself many, many times, I was just like, okay, just breathe in and out. I believe there's two ends of the spectrum. There's focusing on a problem so much and trying to fix it. And then there's skirting around the problem. And those two extremes are very bad if you just avoid the problem and try not to deal it, deal with it, that problem's just going to grow bigger. And oftentimes, if you focus on the problem all the time, just trying to fix it, so me trying to fix his wanting to take off, his scaredness, if I focused 100% on that, I wouldn't have gotten the results I did. Week four, we're riding him now consistently. I finally got him loping, which soon developed into teaching him to track the fence. And I'll say one thing, we sure did a lot of fast laps around that arena. I knew we needed to get him up in the hills. I knew I needed to just get miles on him. Because the arena was not doing whatever it needed to do. So the pack trip that we went on this past summer, um, we went up to Blue Lake, uh, just north of Waterton Park. We were riding along the road and, and the wind picked up and blew Joel's shirt around and Wrangler lost it and Luke was pretty unsecure un I guess with, with his riding on Katie and we were trying to hand the rope off to him so that he could have the pack horse while I was helping Joel to calm Wrangler down. It turned out to be a, a real nice trip, fantastic scenery, fantastic uh, waterfalls in the area. So from the beginning when Joel would talk about Wrangler, I often thought, man, maybe he's gonna end up getting himself killed on this horse. Uh, <clears throat> it always sounded like there was some rodeos involved and, and I think Joel's got plenty of footage showing that kind of situations. Um, but you know, to be honest, the more I watch Joel with Wrangler, the more I watch Wrangler work, uh, I, I really love that horse. So we plan to do a pack trip the, the end of July with Wrangler and a, and a few other greener horses. So Joel brought his horse over in his back saddle and we were going through and fitting it and see what his saddle needed and everything. And we were, I was standing on the <clears throat> right hand side of Wrangler and I was passing the back cinch to Joel and the uh, old Wrangler without a warning, he, he striped me right in, right in the knee. He, uh, <laughs> yeah, I did not see that one coming at all. Um, from there, I let Joel finish saddling him. So, <clears throat> uh, it was gonna be Joel Ebert, Colt Avery, and Kel Wild. We were gonna take uh, three mules and uh, four horses on this trip. And uh, we were going up the South Castle River. We were gonna try to find West Scarp. So we, we rode in. The first day, I don't know, probably about two and a half, three hour ride. We found our, our camp location and uh, Joel, Joel had packed uh, Wrangler that day with, with top pack on him and everything and he did a good job there. Um, the next day was the one that was the interesting day, I thought. We, I, I jumped on my green mule, Kale rode, rode his green mule and Joel was riding Wrangler and uh, so we, uh, we went up this trail that was, I don't know, it's probably been 
10, 15 years since it was groomed and uh, or cut back at all. And the alders were overgrown. They were trying to scrape you off your horse every chance they got. And uh, we got to this cliff bank that was, I don't know, probably four and a half feet, five feet down, fairly, fairly straight down. Anyways, uh, we, were, we were bugging Joel all day because we were all on mules and that's kind of what they're for. But, you know, overall a Wrangler did, did pretty good just like a mule on that, on that trip. Um, you know, he, he took everything good. He didn't uh, freak out with all those alders trying to grab him and, and everything. And, um, so after a good long day up, up on the mountain trying to find a lake that we never did find, we uh, we got back to camp and and uh, there's a nice little swimming hole there. So I was like, oh, we should go swim the horses. And so Joel's like, hold my phone. So I grabbed his phone and videoed him as he went through that old Wrangler through the water. And it was it surprised us all on how deep the water was. And Wrangler ended up swimming all the way across. And he handled it like a champ. He was like a swimming horse after that. I think a huge trust day for me was that second day on the pack trip with Colton there. We covered so much country and by the end of it, he just felt like a horse. Ever since that, that point, I just felt that more and more until by the end, the last few Oh, maybe the last two weeks. I didn't, I didn't warm him up at all. I'd just get on and work on softening exercises. And yeah, there, I didn't lunge him. He was, he was getting quite respectable by the end. My first thought, I had no doubt I wouldn't have gotten on them. Skittery, sensitive, oh yes, yeah, so lion's head. That was actually my first ride up on my horse and um, four of us went. Joel brought Wrangler and um, started out really well. We were heading up and when Remember we went up that mountain and Joel was in front of me on Wrangler and it got real quiet as the trail got narrow and Wrangler's back foot was like on the edge. And everybody just kind of went real quiet. We just kept going and then everybody got past that spot and we were like, on the way down, we're walking them. <laughs> Beautiful ride up, all the horses were wonderful. Wrangler was awesome with the water. Coming down, we ran into um, some people on their bikes. I saw these people on their mountain bikes coming real fast. I put my hand up to kind of say, hey, you know, slow down. And up over the hill came these two massive white dogs tied together off the leash. And the other two horses were actually pretty good, the Dunn and I think Ross was riding Flash. Yet Cola and Wrangler were spinning circles. They got kind of hung up on each other. The dogs, the dogs went right under Wrangler. And you turned their head in and you were you just handled it so well. I did not. I did not. I was yelling at the people to get your dogs. Anyways, um, Finally, the people got off their bikes, grabbed their dogs, but you managed it, man. You held it all together. I think had you not been so calm, I think 
it would have been worse. Bucking wasn't an issue with Wrangler, but he was always like a time bomb, ready to just take out, take off. Uh, we never gotten any wrecks, but you never knew what was going to happen. Consistently pounding those miles to him, I think really did a lot of good for him. Most horses, honestly, I don't take out and do that many miles with, but he just needed something different. As others have said, Joel worked a miracle with this guy and turned him into a horse that, that nobody really thought he would ever be. Wrangler always, uh, he always definitely was paying attention to what was going on at all times. You could always see it in his eyes and his ears. The end result, Wrangler was awesome. When Joel showed him at the challenge. I was uh, quite surprised on how good of a job Joel had done on Wrangler, how, how he had learned like the how well how both of them had probably learned a lot you would never know where where Wrangler started by the ending video I think Wrangler is always gonna be a sensitive type horse he's always gonna be a tough horse but the progress that I saw from that horse we started with to the horse we finished with that's something I'm proud of started working with him and I figured okay I got to do something with this colt I got to get him in the mountains I got to get miles on him he needs a lot of quiet I was able to do two 50 kilometer trips with Wrangler uh, up in the mountains packing and leading pack horses and then I did um, probably five or six 20 kilometer trips and it's just done a world of good for him he's a He's a totally different horse today than he was 60 days ago. I will vouch for that. And like I say, we give total kudos to you, Joel. You've done an amazing job with Wrangler. Now to have you back, is it, how does it feel to not have to compete and to just come and have fun? Well, I would say, even though I'm technically not in the challenge, this was the challenge for me. I, when I got Wrangler, they told me, give him two weeks and let us know if he'll turn out. And if he was a regular client horse, I will say, I probably would have turned him down. But I was like, you know what? I might not be in the challenge, but this is my challenge. And I took it on and... You conquered. I, I feel like we came out good now. I hope Wrangler doesn't make me eat my words today, but he's turned into a real respectful horse. Absolutely. Thank you, Joel, so much. Have fun today walking people through your program. He's going to come in, folks, and like I told you before, this horse of his is probably the hardest horse that we've ever kind of had. We picked him up a little bit older from a breeding program, and Joel had to work his magic. And I can't tell you how impressed I am with what Joel has done with this horse. So I'm going to shut up now, and he's going to walk you through what he's done to help this horse succeed. Wrangler has been quite the horse. As you can see, if you've been watching my videos, he's a totally different horse now than he was back when I started. So I'm gonna walk you through some different exercises that I'm doing with him that go along with the pattern that these folks have been doing. So this first one, I'm gonna start working on his turnaround. So that's what I call the spin and so what I want this horse to do I want him to crave to be in that turn so right now he's feeling like he wants it so I'll let him come into that turn see even right now he's anticipating so I'm just gonna hold him out of this turn a little bit make him crave for it and then let him come in so he starts distinguishing the difference between between a fast so I want him to stay soft all the time. There, now slow down. Ooh.
is bring my foot back. See how he brings that hat, hip in? That's what I'm looking for. I have done more desensitizing than I think I ever have on another horse in my life. And so I did that every day, different desensitizing exercises. And over time, he quieted down more and more. And I was taking him up in the mountains, leading pack horses off him. I packed him. And now I guess you can see the fruits of the labors. I think Wrangler's always going to be a sensitive type horse. He's always going to be a tough horse. But the progress that I saw from that horse we started with to the horse we finished with, that's something I'm proud of. Thanks for watching our journey with Wrangler. If you enjoyed it, check out our website and you can see more horse training footage. A huge thank you to Colton, Brenna, and Mark for doing the interviews for the film. And I'd also like to give a shout out to Cattle Vids for filming the Rock and Heart Challenge there. And also a huge thank you to the Garners for giving me the opportunity to have the experience I did. Have a good day.